Right. Well, because that same year you got arrested by the FBI and charged with a, a violation of your supervised release. Yeah, I got a, I got violated every time I was on supervised release. Okay, what did they violate you for that time? Talking to talking to a convicted felon. You're not allowed to talk to somebody when you're on supervised release. You can't talk to a felon. Me and you could be in the same cell for 20 years. We come home tomorrow. If I see, you, I can't talk to you. <laughs> it's fucking. So that's a, and. I, but that's just their way to put you in. It's like a revolving door. Yeah. How long do they send you back in after you violate? She gave me three years. I did a year. I did a year on a violation. Got it. Got it. So now you get out. And then Stanfa uh, ends up getting arrested for RICO, gets convicted, and gets sentenced to life. Right. So now you're out. And, um, well, a bunch of stuff happens that we can't really talk about. Right. Um, can you talk about a guy named Louis Tara? Who? The Louis Tura. Uh, yeah, I know him. I know of him. Okay. Because at one point, Louis Tura, allegedly he was beaten by, you know, he felt it was by someone that was affiliated with you. Uh, he had a meeting at his house where him, his father, uh, and some other guys basically talked about killing you. I don't know nothing about it. Uh, Louis Tura gets arrested and he ended up hanging himself in, a, in his jail cell. What did he do? He, he hung himself. Oh, he hung himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You heard about this? Yeah, yeah. It's in the paper, yeah. Okay. Do you know who Anthony Tura was at all? No, I don't know them. I know the brother. I know they breed rats. The brother Rocky's a rat. They're all rats. Right, because his father, Anthony Tura, got arrested also for plotting to kill you, and then uh, he got shot dead uh, outside of a, a federal courthouse. Yeah, I was acquitted of that, too. Oh, they charged you for that? Yeah, I got acquitted. Okay. So, what was that trial like? Uh, how did you end up beating that case? They didn't believe the witnesses. They didn't believe Ralph. They love Ralph. Ralph got caught more fucking lies than he got caught. He said after, I don't know who got killed. He knew, he knew that my, my grandfather, I said it on my podcast, my grandfather was good friends with Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe and all them. And we had a house. That's where I was born and raised, 927 Jackson. And he, um, everybody knew. Like, they used to block the street off. Joe DiMaggio come to my house, Yogi Berra, all, all, the, all the Yankees. My grandfather was good friends with Joe DiMaggio was his guy. And I guess Ralph was older than me, so he knew. You know, he knew about the house on Jackson Street. So we're on trial, and this lying motherfucker, he's on the stand, and he says, uh, after the murder... Was it, fuck murder was it? I think VZ, one of these murders. He said, we met at my house on Jackson Street. He come up this big story. Every house the same, three bedrooms, one bathroom. He said, the house, three bedrooms, one bathroom. He hugged everybody, kissed. He made it sound like a fucking movie. So I'm sitting there. Now this is supposed to happen in 90, fuck was it? 94, 95, whatever. I said to my lawyer, the fucking house it's impossible so we went and got the deed my grandmother sold the house to chinese people three years before that mm. so now we bring the chinese guy in with an interpreter and my lawyer says did you ever see these it was seven of us my lawyer's like did you ever see any of these guys in your house he said impossible you know joey merlino never seen him was he ever in your, did you live in the house this date yeah here's the deed everything that everything the fucking jury was left. He lied. He fucking lied. He got caught. He got caught in a million lies. Okay. The, jury, the jury didn't believe one word he said. They said it. After, after the trial, the jury said, I, I don't know why the government wasted their time putting him on the stand. We didn't believe one thing he said. Well, I mean, you guys were friends at one point. Why do you think he turned on you and started testifying against you? Because he got caught selling drugs. He was getting life with no parole. He got caught uh, selling drugs. Not with us. Him and his son. His son-in-law. Got caught selling drugs with Previty, Ron Previty. 
We didn't, had nothing to do with us. He was got caught selling meth for his fourth time. He was getting life with no parole, never getting out. So what did he do? Made up a story, blamed us for everything. He got fucking 10 years, whatever, instead of life. His son-in-law got out and we went, you know, and we had to fight for our lives. Okay. Everybody that told on me got caught doing something like by themselves. You know what I mean? Not, they didn't get caught doing a crime with me. Everybody that told on me, just like Trump, the, the lawyer Cohen, what the fuck's his name? He got caught fucking income tight. He, now he's telling on Trump. Fuck's he blaming Trump for? Trump ain't got nothing to do with him. It's the same story. It's easy. Mm-hmm.